coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. So I landed a job as a junior currency analyst. I'm really excited. It's a good fit. What's absolutely unforgivable is to give it back on one stupid, stubborn trade. I'm in the Dominican Republic right now, down here to meet with a large potential investor. Not sure exactly what to expect. We've got a big fish. He doesn't have a big account with us. Now we want his real money. How much US would that be? 930,000. You do have to be ballsy. That separates the men from the boys. It's filling up right now. I got a minute to go. Got to get in there and hurt somebody. Past several weeks, we've experienced a significant market correction. There's a lot of problems in the marketplace. Uh, there's a lot of people losing large amounts of money and also losing their jobs. A lot of the investment banks out there, they're firing their CEOs. Some banks might even go under altogether. It's definitely having an impact on everything. The markets are down and Sandus is down. Sandus is the majority of our book. I've seen their stock down 20, 30, 40 percent scares a lot of clients, but there's two ways you can handle that, okay? You can hide under your desk, you can ignore phone calls, or you can take this and use it to your advantage. So what we've decided to do is first and foremost, go back and do the homework again. Make sure that everything's correct with Sandus. Make sure we didn't make any mistakes. And all of our checks came back with A pluses. We think this sell off is not merited. Uh, we think we're gonna have a nice bounce back. So we've been on the phones, talking to clients, you know, holding their hand all the way through it, and also building new relationships with new clients. We could probably get a better figure for that. What, you have 100 to 500 million? Okay. We've taken the past month as an opportunity to get some guys on the phone, explain the story, tell them we're still 110% convinced Sandisk is going higher, and we've tried to add on to our position. Okay, lower our dollar cost average a little bit more. Stock's on sale. There's nothing wrong with it. Fundamentals are still in place. It just got pulled back a little bit with the market. It happens. That's the market. If it went up in a straight line, everybody would be a broker, we'd all have a million dollars. When everybody's playing the trumpet, usually you need to be selling. When everybody's scared and when everybody's laying low is when you usually should be buying. You do have to be ballsy, especially when the market's turned down. That separates the men from the boys. I landed a job as a junior currency analyst at this company called FXCM. I'm really excited. It's a good fit with my European background. I want to welcome you to FXCM. This is our headquarters, and we also have offices in Dallas, San Francisco, Hong Kong, China, London. This is very important to remember because Daily FX, which is the research team that you're working with, is geared towards individual investors. Okay. So Since I studied international business, I'm going to get to use that side of my degree to follow political and economic news events and see how they affect exchange rates. FX stands for foreign exchange. It's the single largest uh, financial market in the world. It trades $3 trillion of uh, capital per day. It trades 24 hours a day, five days a week. It responds to big geopolitical events, big economic events, and it's the largest market in the world that nobody's ever heard of. You know, part of the reason we did very well was because we did a lot of special reports. In your articles, what we want to do is generate, you know, conversation. About what Today we had my first Monday morning meeting. The job is a mix of journalism and technical analysis. The one that we're going to concentrate on is the Fed rate decision. Will they, yeah. will they not I'm cut? I'm going to take the opposite side of that. I, I think I'm going to take the side that the Fed isn't going to cut. It was interesting to be there because they're very opinionated people. If retail sales this week prints halfway high, decent, high oil we prices have a bounce. is the reason. 
they need to cut interest rates. It's one of the reasons. My name is Kathy Lean, and I'm the chief strategist here at FXCM. Boris and I both manage the research team. Our research website is dailyfx.com. Our whole staff works on 12, 15 articles a day. Kind of like running a newspaper that never closes. There's an enormous amount of strength. It means a huge amount of capital. That means they're still the buyer of last resort for U.S. Treasuries. Our primary responsibility is to cover the FX markets 24 hours a day and to generate research ideas so that our customers could trade off of them. And the great thing about foreign currencies is that you really only trade eight currencies. All you have to do is follow eight countries and compare the performance of each country against each other. It emulates the stock market to some degree, but it's more simplistic. Hurricane Dean has come and Hurricane Dean is gone. The oranges market has calmed down. It's had a big sell-off after the last crop report and uh, the market is trading around 120, which is absolutely perfect for us. I don't like it. What I usually do in the morning is I'll walk around, talk to a couple brokers, see what they think, try to synthesize as much information about today as I possibly can and digest that before the opening so that I have somewhat of an advantage if I can get that. What do you think this morning? So right now, we're in the worry season for a trader. You'll see all this talk going on, pre-opening, before. It doesn't matter. It means nothing. The game is played in the ring. It doesn't matter if I tell you orange juice is going down. When I walk in the pit and I vote, that's all that matters. Hurricane's a little early for that, but way too early for weather. We're going to vote with real money, and at the end of the day, we're going to see how we come out on top. More important is Brazil and the size of their crop. I think it's going to open a little bit firmer here. A couple of the brokers said it looks a little bit higher, so uh, you can see the pits filling up right now. Game on here again. Morning. I got a minute to go. I've got to get in there and, and hurt somebody. Morning, morning, morning. I'm in the Dominican Republic right now. I'm here to meet with a potential investor for our fund. I'm meeting with the owner of Sun Village Resorts. Not sure exactly what to expect here, but this is an opportunity to get to know him better and hope to have him see the value in our fund and uh, look to invest in us. Cuba, DR, Puerto Rico. And then you got the chain islands here, and then you come up into the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos. Finally captured a segment of his time, which really was the goal in coming up here. Well, so Dominican's not an offshore tax-free haven no. like Turks is. No, full-blown U.S. tax convention. It is, yeah. okay. I've been back and forth having small meetings with Derek over the past few months, and this is finally the time to sit down and really get in front of him. As the Caribbean basin mm -hmm. is growing right now, uh, three and a half hours uh, flight from New York, two hours from Miami, two and a half from Atlanta. It's over a, a two-day period, I'm able to get an hour and a half of his time and really have him focus on our business and allow me to focus on his business and then hopefully we'll be able to do some business together. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. I think he's right on the edge. He just needs that kick in the ass to get him over. How much do you ask for that be? 930,000. You do have to be ballsy. That separates the men from the boys. One of the things I want to do is try to understand more of the life of one of my clients. So what am I doing wrong? This is what you call business. <laughs> So everybody's in unison that we're going to go 139 on the euro this week. Yes? You see 39 before end of the yeah, week? Yeah, I think we'll be pretty okay. bullish for it. Well, I'm looking at the euro dollar pair. I'm just going to look at some of the news that came out today to see if it had an effect on how um, the currency pair traded. I kind of like technical analysis. With Letitia, we're basically showing her how the market works, what drives fluctuations in the currency market. We're teaching her about how we write and the thought process that happens in our research and analysis. Also, we want to help her become a good trader. It was released because our job here is we always say that we're traders first and analysts second. We like to put ourselves in the shoes of our clients, and a lot of our research is very trading oriented. So let's go ahead and get started. Manufacturers rose their price for the ninth month in August. They already rose 0.3% in July. Investment lending also decreased 6.8%. On Bloomberg, they thought that the Bank of Japan would not um, raise interest rates. And on a yearly basis, it rose 2.6%. What I found was that the decrease was mainly due to expectations of like higher interest rates. OK, fantastic. So that's the way I want you to think. Okay, okay. And so when we do this again tomorrow, what you want to do is look at the currency market reaction.
I rent a house in the Hamptons. It costs me $100,000 for three months for a seven bedroom house. It's nice, but this is, this is way nicer than what the Hamptons is. It's great to be out here in the Dominican Republic to relax a little bit, enjoy. It's great when you can combine business with relaxation a little bit. I've got a couple days to try to understand more of the life of you know, one of my clients. I'm starting to learn a little bit more about his properties. Everything from the middle of the road over is also land that we've kept. We've sat on this property for years. We've got enough inventory in this location. So now we'll sell off the rest of this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? We're just about to come into Ocean World. Here's the entrance to the park. Oh, this is neat, the little waterfall thing. <laughs> no rag tops. Yeah, exactly. That keeps the little scooters out. The best way to do it is to leave here at dusk, yeah. have cocktail and dinner uh, prepared on, on the yacht on the way over, sure. go to bed and you wake up and you're at some deserted island. <laughs> That's awesome. Derek wanted us to get a different perspective of the island, so he took us out on his boat. Come on aboard, Brett. It's, it's be a beautiful down boat, down goes be somewhere around 35 yeah. knots. Uh, this is definitely not a bad way to spend a Saturday in uh, November. So what am I doing wrong? This is what you call business. <laughs> One of the things I want to do is learn more about my client's assets, what he has here, what's important to him to try to find ways that I can actually add value to his business. We really feel that we have the breadth and gamut of understanding to help a business in any capacity they need it. We have everything in-house. This was finally a time where there are no distractions around. A great opportunity to really sit and discuss his business, my business. We invest in everything we're doing, so you know we are heavily aligned and have a lot of skin in the game. That's what I really like is the fact that you guys are personally uh, uh, vested in, in the project. It's, it's, it's not a fund where there's just a fund manager uh, sitting there uh, ro fees. rolling products in and collecting fees. Go to you, Six and a half, seven and a quarter. One and one and a half. One and one and a half. One and one and a One and one and a half. 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 One and one I've been basically trading for 18 years, my entire career. You come here when you're young and you clerk for somebody. You learn how to trade from your trader that you're clerking for. I did that for a while. I made enough money so that I went out on my own. I would say half the people down here back themselves. It's my money, if I lose it, it's my money. Not a lot of representatives of large firms. I guess the risk of blowing out is too big. Most people who come here lose their money and go away. What you see here are the survivors. Yeah, on the day, 38 to 50. It's kind of a weird atmosphere now because the stock market has been bobbling around. We had a relatively neutral to unfriendly report that was released this morning. Hey! 50 bucks! There's more cotton in the world than we had expected, and yet today we rallied. So a lot of people are a little bewildered. They kind of thought we would sell off 100 points. Instead, we actually rallied 100 points. We have a pretty big rally going on in other commodities right now. Cotton, all the grains are up pretty substantially. Um, so, you know, maybe getting a spillover effect here. We're positioned well here. This is absolutely perfect for us. What's that? We've got a guy, he's a big fish, you know what I mean? He's one of the heavy hitters that we like to have in the book. What we're going to do today is we'll get him back on the phone. We've had several conversations with him. He's one of our larger clients overseas. Uh, he doesn't have a big account with us, but he's capable of a very large account. He owns 5,000 shares of SanDisk, a quarter million of his money. That's, that's a drop in the Atlantic to a guy like this. Now we want his real money. We'll try to bring him up to somewhere around 30,000 shares. Uh, it'll be about a, a million dollar investment. We haven't pitched him 20 different ideas. We're stuck with one main story, Sanders. He likes the company. I think he's right on the edge. He just needs that little kick in the ass to get him over. If we did get the trade, it'd be great for our group. Another million dollars under management, another 25,000 shares of the stock. We'd be very happy to have that. Especially at times like these, when we're getting beat up in the market, to have a good day really helps. You know, because being a stockbroker, it's all peaks and valleys. And, and certainly right now, it's a valley. Hello, Michael. Speaking. 
Uh, Michael, how are you? Hey, boys. I'm great, thanks. Just looking to touch base with you real quick. I know we had numerous conversations about SanDisk. We're trading around 37 right now. I know you're not too happy with that. We're down about 15%. But obviously, with the market correction, it's given us a great opportunity to step back in and buy some shares at a uh, cheap level. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't had much time. I've actually got Nigel with me. I think Jim had a brief conversation with Nigel. How you doing, Nigel? All right, mate. Good to hear. Last time we spoke, uh, we were talking about trimming it down to 25,000 shares. Uh, you'd be looking at a cash outlay right about 930,000. Just a touch under a million okay. with commissions and everything. Uh. Nigel, you're a technical guy. This chart looks like a slingshot pointed at the moon right now. I don't disagree. I didn't think you would, Nigel. So you're thinking maybe 90 days on this one, boys? We could be out of half the position as early as three weeks. The rest we want you to hold on for 90 days. Can I just put you on hold one second? Go ahead. Um, how much US would that be? Just a touch under a million. Can I just put you on hold one second? Go ahead. Sound, uh, sound pretty confident about this one. Absolutely. We couldn't be more confident. We wouldn't have you on the phone if that wasn't the case. You know, Mike, give us a shot at your real money here. And 90 days from now, if you still don't like what we have to offer and we haven't proven ourselves to you, uh, we'll talk about sending you some money back. But, uh, you know, a million dollars to you uh, with your $200 million net worth is really a drop in the Atlantic. All right, so. Okay, let's do the 25 uh, today. Give me seven days to get the wire over because I'm out of the country tomorrow. So I will uh, get the wire out next week, okay? Okay, perfect. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Enjoy your trip. Yeah, thank you. All right, Mike. Okay. Goodbye. Perfect. All done, Mike. Yep. So, all right. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's Mike, probably the largest guy we have in our book right now. We've been working on him for quite a while, and he finally set it on just doing just a touch under a million. So, yeah. I don't know what it is about that guy, and this doesn't usually happen, but he seems to like us. You know, and it just makes doing business that much easier. Yeah. I don't know if he gets a kick out of the fact that we're you know aggressive with him or what it the is. The accent, but. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but he's always been pretty easy on us. You know, his stock's down, and he's buying more. So. You know, we make him some money, who knows what's after this, you know, because he's got a $200 million net worth, he gives us a million bucks, it's, uh, it's a small token, but, you know, we make him 30, 40% here, who knows, maybe next time it's 10 million, so, we'll work our way up, one foot in front of the other. We began, had a pretty good rally in oranges today, we were able to sell some call spreads, which really fits our position well. No, go switch back to here. After the last down move, we were able to clean it up, make the money back that we lost, and now we're way ahead on that. You're up, you're up by eight ticks. It's been a pretty fun ride watching this thing dropping from a dollar eighty down to a dollar ten. This morning got a little bit crazy. They didn't think that as much cotton was going to show up on this report. The first knee-jerk reaction was, oh, we got to sell this market. And that happened this morning, but then it sort of worked its way back up. The markets rallied. And I think we have to attribute it somewhat to the outside green markets. What did you do with her? You sat down with we her? We went over the uh, some of the indicators that came out, um, like numbers right. that came out. Yeah. Right. So... Yeah, we just like talked about their significance. Okay. Well, our plan with you is to make sure that, you know, one, you understand basically how these things operate, what moves these things up and down, how they trade. And the most important thing that I really wanted to do is to make sure that every time you had a trade idea, you were doing it for a reason. It's very important to make sure that you at least have a rational, reasonable approach, you know? Um, even if it's completely wrong. You know, I've seen a few accounts literally have taken $10,000 and ran it up to millions of dollars. But I've seen hundreds more cases where they've taken a million dollars and run it down into 10000 It's a business, really, of being wrong. Woody Allen had this great quote. He said, 90% of life is just showing up. And 90% of trading is just staying alive until you catch the one, two, three good trades that really make it, you know, make it worthwhile for you. Never be afraid about losing money small. What's absolutely unforgivable is to have five, six, seven winners in a row and then give it all back on one stupid, stubborn trade. You know, markets never make it easy for you to make money. All they want is a good, stable return of their money, transparency, good management, good accounting, good reporting. 
insurance companies. Other than that, the only other type of investors I want are strategic people. People that we can help their business and they can help our business and we just, we just work together growing the funds. I knew I had him really focused when he started asking some very pointed questions about my business. Now what about your management team? Tell me a little bit about that. I, that's one of the things I pride ourselves on because at the end of the day, that's what builds our business. As he learned more about what my business was, as I'd hoped, um, he came up with a lot of ideas of how we can actually work together. So in the way we've been expanding with um, getting into founding some uh, de novo banks, some traditional commercial banks, really can create some good synergies. If you need bank financing, we can help you. If you need private equity capital, you know, we can help you. So it's, it's interesting how we can sort of work back and forth within assets that we have you know, either control or a strong influence over. Is, is there a general um, um, placement figure that, 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 that you guys look for? At the end of all the meetings, I think he's really excited in some of the banking work that we do. How much you would invest in a company. Sure. And, and what That's what business is always about to me. You need to find something actionable. You can talk about different opportunities forever. Until you have that first actionable step, it's hard to really take off. You know, just on some of the points that we've spoken about today, uh, it's very clear that there's going to be several uh, parallels that we're going to be able to work with into the future. The key is, I think, at the end of all this, that we have that first actionable step. There's something he's excited about, and we have a follow-up timeline looking to have him come into an investment opportunity with us within the next two weeks. Uh, and we're certainly looking forward to working Definitely. with you. Definitely. Pleasure, Derek. You lowballed him, dude. You would say totally that. took the easy way out. <laughs> Did he not, Garrett? So anytime we have something good happening in our favor, you know, a nice trade, we do a nice bit of commission for the day. We always like to go out, unwind a little bit, maybe a couple beers. My mom could have got a million out of him. I'll tell you what, I get deals done, you guys talk about what you could have, should have done. I'll tell you what, big shot, why don't you get the beers then? <laughs> Since you're getting <laughs> done. <laughs> All right, boys, good job today. Yeah. We need about five more of those this month, and uh, bad market be damned, we'll make some money this year. Right. We're always trying to add high net wealth individuals to our book. A lot of times we'll be dealing with smaller guys, you know, maybe they'll send in 100,000 here, 100,000 there. So when you actually get a guy to send in a million dollars on one trade, on one phone conversation, it's not just relieving, but it's a sales euphoria. You know, it's a sales job in a way. Peaks and valleys, man. Definitely in the valley right now. Yeah. You can make it back to a peak, we'll be in good shape. There's lots of days where it's tough, where saying this is down or whatever stock we're in is down. You gotta enjoy the good times, that's for damn sure. He was the first broker on the New York Rubber Exchange in 1880. You know, they're real people. They're bottom feeders. That's the only reason I can buy them. Not for the money, it's a camaraderie. These are a couple of our account openers. They get to bickering and arguing and talking and laughing and cutting up. So I was like, Jesus, you guys are worse than Bert and Ernie. And then I kind of looked at them, and they kind of look like Bert and Ernie. And then you guys can clearly see there's a lot of resemblances here between these two guys and Bert and Ernie.